Hello, welcome to Bumble Stitches podcast. This is episode 30. My name's Nicola and it's Sunday the 16th of September. It's really good to be back. I say that every time, but it really is. I've had a little bit of a a longer break between this episode and the last episode and I've been busy with lots of things that I'd like to share with you today. So uh, if you're a returning viewer, thank you ever so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer or a new subscriber, welcome to the podcast. I've noticed quite a few of you have found your way over to my podcast recently. So a warm welcome to you all and I hope you enjoy the new episode. Um, Right, I've got some finished objects to share with you today and I've got quite a few whips and some acquisitions and a few other bits and pieces just to talk to you about. You can find me here obviously on YouTube because you're here with me now. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram as Bumble Stitches. You can find me on Ravelry as Bumble Stitches, where we have a podcast group in the groups tab. Just search for Bumble Stitches podcast. That'd be lovely to see you there. And you can also find me on Etsy, although the shop is a little bit empty and quiet at the moment. But I am hoping to get some project bags sewn up and put in there in the near future, time permitting. So how are you all? I hope you all had a really nice time since I saw you last. I hope you've got lots of crafting done, lots of knitting and sewing and whatever your whatever your thing is that you love to do the best. Um, it's been, yeah, a busy time for me. I've had lots of uh, work trips. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that hotel knitting is back, which means I'm uh, back to doing uh, overnight trips uh, for work. So, which is always... It's nice because I get lots of uninterrupted knitting time, uh, but on the other hand, it is nice to be at home and have access to all my stash and just to be at home, really. I'm a bit of a home bird. I do like to be here as much as I can. But one of the benefits of being away a lot is I do get to um, check out local yarn stores, which is always nice. So, yeah, so Hotel Knitting's back on Instagram and it's... Uh, yeah, I do get quite a lot done when I'm when I'm away from work, uh, well from home rather, in hotels and that. So I have had a quite a busy time with that, and I have been a bit fidgety is the best way I can describe it with my crafting recently. Um, I was on a massive sock kick, which you'll see when I show you some of my finished objects. But it's all about the sweaters at the moment and I can't seem to stop casting them on. So I've got quite a lot of whips and yeah, I've been going gung-ho on one project. Then my eye gets turned by something else and I start on that. And yeah, there's quite a lot going on. So but it's all good and there's a lot worse things you could be um, getting on with rather than knitting. So I don't feel too guilty about it, but I'll share all those with you a little bit later. I also had a wonderful time yesterday. Uh, recently, I was very lucky to have been given a spinning wheel um, by a lovely lady called Sam, who contacted me through Instagram and offered to give me a wheel that she was no longer using. So i talk about that a little bit later on. So I went and did some spinning um, tuition yesterday, which was really good fun. So I'll have a little chat with you about that later on in the episode and lots of plans for upcoming events and a retreat that I'm going on so yeah it's all it's all bingo here and uh, yeah I think that's what autumn's all about isn't it the summer's finally making way for the autumn and there's lots of nice cozy evenings where we can sit and get on with all our favorite things so anyway enough waffling on from me I'm going to show you some finished objects now so first up um are the socks that I knitted. Uh, these were knitted in the Crazy Zalba Ball in the Bunt Gas colorway. And I've just done a vanilla sock on a 2.25 needle, I think I did these on, just with a one by one twisted rib, cuff, stocking stitch, heel flap and gusset, and then just down to sort of like a a rounded toe which I really like the fit of and I borrowed this from the 
dandelion socks pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. I knitted those a little while before and really like the way the toe decreases worked. So I popped it onto these socks here and I really like the way they've turned out. So as you can see, they really aren't matchy matchy. I just, I didn't do any yarn management. I knitted this sock first and then I just literally carried on. I thought it was going to change colour a bit sooner, but it went just carried on to the green. So same but different, but I really, really like them. The fit is nice. The yarn blocked up really, really soft, which I was really, really pleased with. And it was nice to get those off the needles. So the box of socks is actually coming along really well. This will take me to um, the completed ones that I've got to share with you today. It takes me to 10 pairs, I think, which is handy because that means I'm sort of, I've got a period of grace until November to start um, getting November and December socks done to complete the 12 pairs. And that's handy because at the moment I really need to be concentrating on my sweater whips and also a test knit that I'm doing at the moment. So that's the first finished object. So really pleased to have got those off the needles. I'll pop those down there. The next finished object is more socks. And these are my Atlantic Current socks. And I'm pretty sure this is a free pattern on Ravelry. But I really like these because of the slip stitch pattern this is beautiful yarn that I got from it was part of a kit this is the rest of the cake I've got quite a lot left because I put the coordinating um, heels and toes in but this is a West Green Lofts yarn I can't remember what the colorway is called oh it's the Lovebird colorway if that's in focus is it in focus might not be oh i think the camera's playing up a little bit today um yeah so it's a west green lofts yarn and this was part of a kit that i got uh, it was a collaboration between vicky of west green lofts and jewels of so sweet violet so it was a little knitting nest um sort of bag you know not a bag without handles sort of like a little sort of like yarn um tub if you like and it came with this beautiful yarn. So I thought because it had all these lovely variegations in, just a slip stitch pattern would not detract from the yarn, but just add a little bit of interest. And I popped in the, the pink on the heels and the purple sort of lilac-y colour on the toes. And these were from my Nora George Yarns advent calendar from last year. So they have come out really well i'm very very pleased with them i think i knitted these on a 2.5 mil needle 64 stitches and again a one by one twisted rib which i really like i hate knitting it because just all that knitting through the back loop is a little bit of a bit of a pain but i really like the effect it gives and i just did a, a, a simple um sort of like wedge toe on these so that is pair number 10 for my box of socks I think I'm going to have to get a big box actually because they are, I'm going to show you because in case you haven't seen my box of socks in progress before, it's just down here. Um, I keep it in this little red sort of card suitcase thing. I can't remember where I bought it. And they live in there. So I've got the eight pairs in there already. Two more to pop in. As you can see, not a lot of space here. So I might have to either squish them up a bit or see if I can find something else but I really like them in this little case so that's coming along quite well and I'm very pleased the next pair of socks that I have well just before I move on I mentioned that the yarn for the heels and toes on these was from um, an advent calendar from Nora George that I got last year now, I loved my advent calendar. I'd resisted, um, previous years I'd resisted because they are quite an investment and I couldn't really sort of justify it at the time. But I did splurge last year and got the Nora George one, which is beautiful. And it's been great because I had loads of minis to pop into my... Well, the first thing I made was the Land of Sweets cowl by Helen Stewart from her Knitvent series, which comes out every year. And I highly recommend you check that out when it does come out. Um, 
And there was also plenty left to go in my granny stripe blanket. So there's loads of minis left and obviously heels and, and cuffs and toes as well. Now this year, Kelly from Lay Family Yarn has organised, I think she did it last year, but I, I must have been under a rock when that happened. She's organised an advent swap um, on Instagram. And I caught it in time, because I know Instagram, the algorithm makes it a little bit funny and sometimes you don't see even people that you follow all the time and that post regularly you don't always see their latest posts but I did see the one where she was asking people to sign up for an advent swap this year and put my name down and she's matched everybody up which was no mean feat because there were quite a lot of people well a huge amount of people that wanted to do that I guess people you know that didn't necessarily have the budget or want to splurge on a sort of pre-made advent calendar so we're all going to swap with each other get 24 minis wound up um, and possibly some other bits and pieces a main skein for Christmas day and I'm really really looking forward to doing that I've got some ideas buzzing around in my head already so I think it is too late to sign up for that particular one but it might be an idea for those of you that really like advent calendar you know yarn advent calendars and let's face it, we've all got so many odds and ends. I mean, you've only got to look at how much I've got left of this. This will make a beautiful mini. Get swapping, swap with your friends. Um, I think it's a really good way to still have the thrill of a nice little mini to open every day in the run up to Christmas, but without that, you know, a bit more of a an investment in a pre-done advent calendar. So anyway, moving on. The third finished object that I have and I'm really pleased to have got this done because I was nagged a little bit. Um, these are the Rose City Rollers socks that I knitted for Emily. Emily is Justin's daughter and she has been asking me for a pair of socks for ages. So I finally got round to doing these and getting them completed. Um, but I was a little bit mean. I did say she had to wait, even though they were done, it was a bit, it was a bit, torturous really to say you can't have them till I've done the podcast so she's patiently waited for me to do the podcast and they're finally done and they've knitted up really really well again you can see the same as the um the Zalba ball socks they are not matchy matchy in fact they're quite different because these are from a sock blank which I'll just show you this is a sock blank from Stranded Dye Works and it is the street art colorway and I've got quite a bit left. So I've still got this much left. So I could probably get another pair of shorties out of these, which I might make for myself because I just love the way the, the colours have worked out. You can see just how different they are. I like the way they've micro-striped here. Really, really fun. And then obviously onto the second sock, which you can see just how different that is and this I think even this pull in looks really really cool and Emily really likes them they fit really well so finally she can have those and once they were all blocked it's the first time I'd knitted from a sock blank and obviously the yarn is if you've never seen a sock blank before you're knitting with the very curly yarn as you unravel it from the from the blank itself and you do have to kind of adjust your tension to allow for that because it sort of keeps springing back on itself. And when the socks were knitted, they were very, very lumpy bumpy because of that. But I gave them a little bit of an extra soaking time before I popped them on the blockers. And they are now really, really smooth and all the stitches have evened out. So hopefully they're going to be really comfy. So I look forward to finally giving them to Emily to wear and I'm sure she'll be pleased to finally have her pair of hand knitted socks. I just wanted to let you know as well that she has been asking me to teach her to knit for a while and we finally got down to doing that yesterday. I got back from my spinning lesson and did a few chores and then she presented me with her yarn and needles and we sat down and got her cast on and she did fantastically well. Um, she's just been going great guns at it so it's it's nice to sort of pass the skills on um, and at the moment she's knitting a cowl so with a nice variegated yarn so perhaps I'll show you some progress of that 
next time and see how she's got on but hopefully she'll be getting on really really well with it when I see her next time she comes around to stay with us. So that brings the finished objects to a conclusion so I'm just going to have a little tidy away of these things so I can move on and show you some of the wits so I don't get in a terrible pickle like I normally do and I always moan about it on the podcast that I've got into such a mess so I pop those down there out of the way okay the next um whip that I wanted to share it's it was still on the socks theme I'll take the pattern I've been really super organized with my patterns lately I bought a load of these plastic pockets and popped them all in there and bought a couple of A4 folders to store them in, which is working quite well because they were just getting everywhere. I don't know about you, I do save all my patterns onto the iBooks on my iPad, but I do print them off and I like to work from a printed pattern. So these are the Honey Bee Dance Socks by Curious Handmade. These are part of the Sock Society. And I'm gonna be in trouble with Amanda knitting mummy we are knitting these as a little knit along before we head off to the um, country house retreat in October. But I think she's actually finished hers and mine haven't actually got very far. So I think I'm gonna have some explaining to do, but I'll show you how far I've got. It's a really lovely pattern. So you can see the pattern there on the socks and it's quite simple, but really, really pretty and effective. And the reverse is just stocking it, so you get that sort of like rest between the the pattern sections. So loving how they're turning out. I've got a cute little strawberry donut on there, which is a progress keeper I got from Clementine Taco on Etsy. And this yarn is a Lay Family yarn sock set. That's the band there. And this is called New Beginnings. It's a 7525 superwash merino and nylon. And is such Kelly's yarn is always so subtle, but so many pretty blended shades. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the mini that I've got with this is this very pale green, which is going to make I haven't done the the cuff. Well, I just did the cast on actually, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I just did the cast on in the first row in the green, then went straight to the main skein. And then I'm gonna pop the uh, cuff, not the cuff. I always get this bit wrong. The heel and the toes in the coordinating mini. So I need to crack on and get a bit more work done on those because yeah, I did promise I'd do the knit along with Amanda. So. I just get distracted so easily. That's that's what I mean by saying I'm a, a bit of a fidget. I just keep fidgeting between one thing and another and can't seem to settle on one project at the moment. I don't know if anybody else is like that, but it seems to be something that I can't, can't seem to control at the moment, but never mind. So the next whip, I'm just gonna spin round, just bear with me and grab it because this is my floozy cardigan and this is a pattern by Truly Myrtle which is Libby Johnson and I'm sure lots of you will have seen this on Instagram and on Ravelry everyone's gone crazy for this pattern and you can see why because it is so pretty such a pretty cardi just turn it around so you can see so it's colour work yoke but the difference is that instead of being a stranded colour work yoke, this is all done with slip stitches, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a joy to knit. It's really simple and straightforward. I think even if you'd never done any colour work before, this would be really a good starting point to just get you into that flow. There's never more than two um, yarn colours in each row. And I just love it. In fact, I didn't want the, I didn't want this section to end because I was having so much fun with it. And now obviously it's just down to all the plain stockinette. So I'm very nearly at the point where I need to start adding the ribbon, not a million miles away, probably about an inch, maybe an inch and a half away. 
and then obviously it'll be sleeve sleeve time which is not my favorite but needs must and button bands and so on but I'm really really enjoying this project I think it's going to make a lovely garment when it's finished if you haven't checked it out check out the floozy cardigan um, hashtag floozy cardigan on Instagram and you'll see some stunning examples of this cardi it's gorgeous I've knitted mine in Baram U Titus four ply and that's my yarns. This is my main colourway, which is the Bramley Baths colourway. And I bought this quite a long time ago. I was on um, on a business trip up in Leeds and popped into their store up there and bought a sweater quantity of this. And it was going to be quite a few different things before I decided, well, I almost decided to de-stash it because I couldn't think what I was going to knit with it. And I sort of, you know what it's like, it lives in stash for a while and sometimes you just get a bit fed up of looking at it. But then when Floozy came along, I thought it would be perfect. So I just, all I had to do was buy two more skeins. So I bought the, this sort of pinky red here is called Rose Window. And the natural is called White Rose. And I think because they're a Yorkshire based company, I think a lot of their colourway names are um, on the theme of Yorkshire. So I'm assuming this would be sort of the Rose Window of York Minster. Bramley Baths I know is a old Victorian swimming baths and public baths as they used to be in Bramley and White Rose is obviously I hope it's the White Rose of Yorkshire otherwise yeah because I guess that's how the War of the Roses started but anyway I digress the yarn is beautiful it's a blend of I oh gosh now can I remember what it's a blend of have I got a band in here so that's the band, it's Titus from Bar Am U. 70% British wool, 30% UK alpaca. And the wool content is actually 50% Wensleydale long wool and 20% blue face Leicester. So it's a really beautiful blend of yarn. It's lovely to knit with. And it has got, I don't know if, if the camera will pick it up, it's got a little bit of a, yeah, you can just see it. It's got a little bit of a halo. So I think once this is blocked, it's going to really come into its own and be beautiful so I'm looking forward to finishing this one off and wearing it I'll just show you the pattern so there it is it's the floozy cardi and it's a really lovely garment knit so I'm going to get this one over to the other side and then I'll show you what I got distracted with So it's more colour work and this is the Ingalls sweater by Boiler Knitworks, um, Caitlin Hunter. And as soon as I saw this pattern on Instagram and Ravelry, it just called my name and I knew I had to get it on the needles ASAP. Now it was a bit serendipitous really because I did have yarn in stash for this. I'll show you the yarn that I'm using. So in my way of sort of knitting logic, I convinced myself that because I had yarn in stash, therefore it was free because I didn't have to buy any yarn. And because it was free yarn, I had to start it immediately and drop everything else. So that's exactly what I did. So here's the pattern. It's the Ingalls sweater. And you can see as well as the really lovely color work, You've got these little eyelet lace detail at the top and bottom. The pattern calls for DK. Now the yarn I had in stash isn't actually DK, it's Rowan yarns and it's their pure wool worsted. And I was really naughty, I didn't even do a swatch. So I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. I'm hoping the sizing is gonna be fine. But I am quite prepared that it might not be. And I was also limited in how much yarn I had. I had quantity of this in the blue, which I don't know if the camera's picking it up. You can see it's got little pinky purpley flecks in it as well. And I had just a couple of skeins of this one, this sort of like rosy, was well, sort of a fuchsia colour. 
And many moons ago, this yarn I'd bought for the Wainthrop Cardi by Andy Satterland. And I cast it on and got as far as probably separating for the sleeves. And it just really wasn't working for me it, for lots of reasons. So I frogged it. And I only had the navy at the time. So then I was hunting around on Ravelry for something to use this yarn for. And I found a pattern that had um, some bold stripes across. So I thought because it had this pinky, had the background colour, that the fuchsia would work well. So I bought a couple of skeins of this to do the stripes in. Now bearing in mind that the Wainthrop Cardi is a cropped Cardi, there was never going to be a huge amount of yarn. So I did a little bit of maths and worked out the... Um, the yardage on the skeins that I had, how much I had in total, and went for the medium size, which normally would be too small for me. But here's the caveat. This is a superwash yarn. So as superwash does on soaking and blocking, um, it's, it does tend to grow and spread. I'm hoping that the growing and spreading will be enough to make it fit and sort of not just fit but to fit and look nice so that's the plan anyway so I'm way past the separating for the sleeves as you can see and knitting down the body there's short row shaping at the back so it's a bit higher at the back and you can see where the um the eyelet patterning runs here either side of the sort of colour work block and there is also a little bit of eyelet detail at the bottom in between these colour work motifs and I'm not actually convinced that if I were to knit this sweater again that I would include those. I'm sure they are, you know, who am I to question Kate and Hunter, she's a fabulous designer. But the reason I say it is because I think once it's blocked you are going to see the strands of the colour work. I think you're going to see the pink through those eyelets that run in the colour work section. So we'll see. I mean, I'm certainly not going to rip it back. I'm going to go with it. But I'm hoping it will be fine and it will block out OK. So, yeah, so that's the Ingle sweater. And this has really, really turned my head this past. I cast it on. It's Sunday today, not this Friday, just gone the Friday before. And yeah, because it's this worsted weight yarn, it's really growing quickly. And I think it's gonna make a really nice warm sweater. I'm gonna be brave and show you my um, floats. And those of you who've been watching for a while will remember when I did my Birkin sweater and I did it, I didn't do the color work stranded. I kind of did it by catching every single float in the back, if that makes sense. But this time I have actually stranded at the back. So I'm hoping it's gonna be all right. I'm hoping I've left the floats long enough that when it's blocked out, it will all lay nice and evenly. So there we have the Ingle sweater. And it's just lots and lots of lovely stocking it. Uh, worsted weight yarn so it's growing quickly and it's just perfect for the evenings watching tv and just cracking on with this lovely sweater if it doesn't fit me i'm going to gift it to somebody i'll give it to my daughter or one of my aunties has already taken quite a shine to it so it will be it certainly won't go to waste let's pop that all away and that has been living in my fringe field bag i had a bit of a cull on on enamel pins there were so many on this bag that it was flopping over at the top it was getting a bit of a tangle so the ones that i've put on here i've pushed them right down to the bottom so they're within the pocket inside the bag so there's none of the badge backs to catch on my yarn and the ones that were on there i've left a few little little hole marks but I think in use those will the fabric will just sort of cover them up so those are the whips that I'm actively working on there are other whips that are just on holidays at the moment 
I think where I fall foul of my sweater knitting is as soon as I get to the sleeves. I hate knitting sleeves and it's all too tempting to just cast on another sweater and leave the all the whips. There's lots of jumper bodies but no sleeves, which is a bit naughty. So that is all my whips and finished objects. I think I will move on and just let you know about I know what I need to do. I need to announce the winner of the Old and New Cow, which is a knit along I've been running all this year in my Ravelry group. And it's for anyone that wants to reduce their stash by knitting existing yarn in their stash, but knitting a new pattern with it. So it's old yarn, new pattern. And we had some lovely entries. I'm just getting my notes. We had some lovely entries in August. And the prize for August is this beautiful skein of yarn from Paper Stories, my lovely friend Polly. And there were 20 entries in the August finished objects thread. And I popped in random number generator from 2 to 20. And the winner of August for this skein is Leslie McC24. And she's from Cheshire in the UK. I was in Cheshire last week, Leslie. Um, so congratulations, you're the winner for August. So if you can contact me and let me know your uh, postal address, I'll get this skein sent out to you. And you knitted some lovely Hermione's Everyday Socks using some yarn that your friend gave to you about a year ago. So well done you, it's a fantastic pattern. Um, so I hope you enjoyed knitting those and I hope you enjoy creating something with your new Paper Stories yarn. Now I'm aware that we are already halfway through September, so I don't actually have a physical prize for um, the September entries, so apologies for that, but I will donate a pattern on Ravelry up to the value of $10 to the winner of the September finished objects um, in the knit along so keep adding them there's some fantastic uh, finished objects in the thread already and then the winner can let me know what pattern they'd like and I'll get that sent over to them as a gift on Ravelry but if anybody does want to donate any prizes towards our knit along that would be much appreciated so just get in touch if you wanted to do that thank you right okay um I also just wanted to mention that I'm sure a lot of you have found my podcast via the Knotty Knitwits, which is Michelle and Leslie, and their podcast is fantastic. It's one of my favourites. Those girls really make me laugh. They have some great fun with their knitting and their stories and, and everything that they get up to. And Michelle and I had had a bit of a conversation on, on email about a couple of things. She was helping me out with my Sashui Shrug. Um, which is another story um, but yeah she was super super helpful and she checked out the podcast and she mentioned it on on the Notting It Wits podcast so thank you for doing that Michelle that was much appreciated and hopefully all the ladies that have found their way over here from from there are are enjoying it so that's really cool okay um, I'm just gonna take my glasses off me because they're making me making my face really hot <laughs> Shall we move on to acquisitions? I have got a few things that have found their way into my craft room since I saw you last, and I'd like to share them with you. Now, the first thing is not new. It's been out for a few weeks, but it's this latest edition of Pom Pom Quarterly, which is the moon issue and everyone has gone crazy for, and quite rightly so, it's absolutely stunning. So I picked up a copy of this as soon as I saw it had been published because um, I don't subscribe. So I grabbed a copy as soon as I could because I had, call me Nostradamus, I just had that feeling that everyone's going to go crazy for it and it would um, sell out really quickly. And I think they did have to reprint it. The reason I desperately want to get my hands on this is because of the, um, the Sky Map wrap, which I'm just going to try and find the page in here and show it to you if you haven't seen it already. Just bear with me. I mean, there are every pattern in here is stunning, but this one particularly has caught my eye. And I should have put a page marker in here 
and this is now I need my glasses again right this is by Viola which is Emily Foden sorry about that um, and this is the sky map wrap and it's a mohair wrap that's knitted in the round I believe just as a long long tube and then you can see here at the end where the two layers are and then you embroider your sky map design through both layers at the end just to sort of seal them together almost like quilt them together and this pattern I think is absolutely stunning so I'm hoping to knit this and I was really excited when uh, Loop in London announced on their Instagram page that they were having a day of classes with Emily Foden in November. Um, I haven't actually signed up for any classes, but they're also having a book signing evening for Emily's book. And she's going to be bringing some yarn as well for the Sky Map kits and so yeah i'm going to go along to that event which is in at loop in london i think it's the 17th of november it's saturday so it'll be a nice sort of start to the christmas season to be up in london and get some christmas shopping and pop along to loop and get the book hopefully get some lovely viola mohair to make that wrap so i'm really really looking to to that looking forward to that event but every pattern in this magazine is stunning if you haven't seen it um try and get yourself a copy this Artemis sweater with the gold lurex is that still is that still a thing lurex or is everything still in now I don't know but you can see this is really gorgeous and perfect heading into sort of like the winter season and sort of parties and more sort of dressy events and that so that was one purchase that I made which is the pom-pom magazine I also had a little a little purchase from Sherry's store, Sherry Iris, from her beautiful hand-dyed yarn. These are the Beatrix Potter Collection Minis, and there are two, four, five, 20 gram skeins in here. So I thought these would make some perfect, beautiful scrappy socks. And Sherry has such a delicate, light touch with her dyeing such a clever girl when it comes to creating these soft colour palettes and I think these are going to look really nice as some scrappy socks so that was one purchase and if you haven't checked it out Sherry's got a really lovely podcast as well um, I can't remember the actual name of it but I think if you search I think if you search for Sherry Iris um, on YouTube or check out her Instagram and there's probably a link on there but I do recommend um, both her yarn obviously and her podcast is lovely she does lots of beautiful embroidery sort of um, inspired by birds and nature sort of birds and wildflowers so definitely worth checking out if you fancy another lovely podcast to watch so thank you Sherry they are beautiful what else have I been buying ah okay I mentioned Vicky of West Green Loft Yarns earlier in the podcast when I showed my Atlantic Current socks and she was having um, a celebration of her shop's first anniversary, I think. Yeah, I think it was the birthday of West Green Loft Yarns. So she had a coupon code, so I thought it'd be rude not to go and wish her a happy birthday and have a little look in her shop. And I treated myself to this gorgeous skein and this is called Sweet Pea. I think it's gorgeous. Just the greens and the pinks are absolutely perfect in every way. Again, Vicky is a dye genius. Her yarn is so, so beautiful. And because it was her birthday celebration, she included this gorgeous little progress keeper that's like a slice of cake. And the colours just go perfectly. So that was a delight to receive. Now I've got some plans for this. I think this may be destined to be um, my Strictly Knit Along socks for this year. If you don't already know about this, 
and you watch either Strictly Come Dancing in the UK or any of the um, other variants of the programme that are shown around the world, Dancing with the Stars and I, I don't know if it's called anything else anywhere else. But Starry Eyes Alley um, on Instagram and Little Drops of Wonderful podcast, Ali has run a Strictly Sock Along or Make Along. No, I think it's Sock Along, but it can be crochet on it. And she ran it last year and it was a huge hit and she's running it again this year. So the idea being that you knit your socks while you're watching Strictly or any of the sort of companion programs to Strictly. So there's It Takes Two, which is the program that comes on in between the shows. Um, and I think you can do, you can still count it if you're watching it on catch up or anything like that. And I think she positively encourages any sort of like bending of the rules. So do check that out. It's great fun. We've just had, last week we had the, um, the Strictly program where the professional dancers are paired up with their celebrity dance partners and no program this week. And then I think it starts in earnest next week. So I will be able to get this caked up and I think this will make a really nice yarn for some Strictly socks. So do check that out if you want to play along. I think it's going to be a great deal of fun. And then, yeah, by Christmas time, when the show's all over, have a nice pair of Strictly Come Dancing socks. So that was from Vicky at West Green Loft Yarns. And I also got from Vicky a set of minis. And I was so excited when I heard she was doing these. And they came in this lovely little box. I'm going to show you how they were. So it says West Green Loft yarns on there and inside the box and in the tissue paper which I ripped open because I was so excited are her Wizard of Oz mini skeins I just love them I think they are beautiful so you've got this red sparkly one here which is I would imagine ruby slippers and I don't know if you can see there there are Let's get them out, shall we, so I can show you properly. So there's a little tiny pair of ruby slippers on a progress keeper there, which are so pretty. So that's ruby slippers. This one, I would imagine, seeing it as it has a heart, stitch marker would be Tin Man. And again, this, this has got silver stellina in, so this would be the Tin Man skein. There is a Glinda, the good witch of the, was she of the North? I think she was, with her little pretty magic wand in the lovely colours of her dress with some lovely silver sparkle. And the other two, I should imagine, are Cowardly Lion and the Scarecrow. So what a stunning set of minis. I think that was an inspired choice, Vicky, to make a, a mini skein set out of. I'm just gonna pop them back in the box because it makes me very happy to see them all in the box. And what I'm thinking of doing, as lovely as they are like this, I really got an urge to find a blue, a pale blue and white skein, a full skein of sock yarn to go with this. So the colour of Dorothy's gingham dress in The Wizard of Oz would be the main sort of like blue and white. I don't know where I'm going to find this yarn. So, dyers out there, someone dye me a skein of Dorothy gingham dress yarn, please. And then I'll do the um, contrasting heels and toes in the ruby slippers because I think they will just be the best socks ever. So yes, that would be amazing if I could find some yarn like that to, to, to make that dream come true. So they are stunning. Thank you, Vicky. I'm just, oof, beautiful. So I'm nearly at the end of my acquisitions and I just want to share with you, let's gather them up. I alluded earlier to um, a test knit that I'm doing. I do have a test knit that I need to get cracking on and I will be doing that this afternoon, actually, while this podcast is uploading. Um, I'm doing a test knit for... Um, Libby from Trini Myrtle and I am using this absolutely gorgeous yarn from my equally gorgeous friends at Mr B's, Claire and John and this colour is not working in this light. Isn't this 
gorgeous and autumnal. This is called Mutendi. It's on their Hiddleston base. And you can see that 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And what a stunning colourway. The description on their Etsy, I think if I'm correct, said this is inspired by an orphanage in Uganda. Apologies if this is wrong. And the sun scorched sort of like sandy clay earth I think I might have got that wrong but that's what I can remember so yeah Mutende so I have got a sweater quantity of these which I think is going to make a beautiful warm looking you know that warm rich colour beautiful autumnal knit so I should be getting those caked up later on I have swatched like a very good girl like a test knitter should and I'll be getting that on my needles later on today so the last thing I wanted to chat with you about and I appreciate it's not everybody's bag but I'd like to chat to you a little bit about spinning so if spinning isn't your thing I don't mind if you go and make yourself a cup of tea and get on with your knitting it's been lovely to see you but if you don't mind me having a little chat about my spinning I'm going to do it now. So last episode, I showed you my basket and the problems I was having with the um, with the lining that I made. And lots of you in the comments kindly took the time to comment and I really appreciate when you do that, so thank you, and said, it's fine, just sew it in. So I did. So I took all my lovely friends out there. You all spoke wisely and that's exactly what I did. So I lined the basket, I sewed it in. It's not perfect, but it's done. And it more than does the job of preventing everything from catching on the inside. So this lining, I'll just take that out so you can see. This is made with some Liberty fabric that I had in stash, which is a very pale gray Tana lawn with an all over floral print. And I made the little pocket here so that I can keep bits and pieces. I think got some spare scissors in there and bits and bobs and now it doesn't catch on everything so I'm really pleased that I got it done. Mind you I must say sewing the lining by hand through the basket with a needle was really really hard on my hands and I was quite relieved when it was all done. But there's plenty of room in there, there's plenty of give and it's made the basket really usable. So this is now the spinning basket. So in here at the moment, I just ha I'll just move that out of the way. I just have some spare bobbins for my wheel. And I also have, so let me tell you the story of the spinning. I went to Fibre East and I bought a drop spindle. And as beautiful as the drop spindle was, it was one of the lovely pressed flower ones from Spin City. Me trying to drop spindle was just like a cat handed disaster and I wasn't getting on with it and I felt really frustrated. But in my wisdom, because I've got a lot of that, I decided that I would be such a good spinner if I had a spinning wheel. So I was sitting at home, um, it was one day, I was a bit poorly, I hadn't gone to work that day, I was feeling quite poorly and I was browsing the internet as you do and looking at spinning wheels and thinking, oh, wouldn't that be amazing? And I posted a little Instagram story about it and I was contacted by a wonderful lady called Sam and she said to me that if I would like she would pass on to me a spinning wheel that had been given to her um, because she didn't really have time to use it and lots of different reasons but she wasn't it was just sitting there unused and would I like it so I was like would I like it oh my god that would be amazing um, so we arranged to meet up and I brought the spinning wheel home a couple of weeks ago and sorted it out, gave it a little bit of TLC and tried to do some spinning. It wasn't great, to be honest. I was getting a bit stressed out, uh, feeling frustrated. 
and thinking mm, it may be it's just as well that this was because the, I'd said to Sam if I don't get on with spinning I'll do the same I'll pass the wheel on to somebody that wants to have a go because it only seems you know the right thing to do to give people the option and hopefully one day the wheel will find its forever home well I'm really pleased to say that I think the wheel has found its forever home because I checked out um, spinning tuition in my area and for those of you that don't know for new new viewers i'm actually in suffolk which is in the east of the uk we're about about an hour and a half drive from london so just to give you a rough idea of where, where i am and i checked out spinning classes in my area and there was a lady who's about 10 miles away down at the seaside town of felixstowe a lovely lady called sharon and her company's called Taylor Made yarns and I went along there yesterday for a one-to-one -one, um, spinning tuition session with her, which was fantastic. I couldn't rate it highly enough. Um, I arrived, I took my own wheel with me, which I'm really pleased that Sharon suggested to do that because there's nothing better than learning on the equipment that you have and that you will be using. And I wanted her to just check the wheel over because I think it hadn't really been used for a, a lot you know for quite a while and I just wanted her to check it over and she put some oil on it and just made sure everything was working fine and we had a lovely morning going through all the basics of the actual wheel itself and I even carded my own bat my own fiber bat she had a big drum carding machine so we did that so I made my own fiber bat and then did some spinning uh, turns out my technique wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was I just needed a little bit of tweaking but I did see so much improvement from the hints and tips that Sharon gave me by the time I left the left the class with her uh, she showed me how to ply and the I'm going to show you my now I'm proud of this I know you're all going to laugh but don't because I actually worked really hard on this so promise this is my first skein of yarn that I spun and I'm very proud, it's my yarn baby. So, no teasing. It's very thick and thin. It does need to be washed still. I just, Sharon showed me how to ply it. So we did some plying, which was great fun. And then put it on a nitty noddy. Who knew about all these things? I had no idea. So now obviously I need a nitty noddy as well. And it just needs to have a soak to set the twist I believe I have no idea what I'll do with it there's about 20 yards here there's not a huge amount of yarn but I'm really proud it's nice to learn new skills and yeah I'm actually quietly chuffed that I've actually made some yarn so I think the spinning bug is going to bite hard now um, I do have some fiber that I've been acquiring as well I'll quickly show you that now I've got this hamper. Oh, my daughter gave me this. This is a Pims hamper. That doesn't have Pims in it anymore. Um, let me just move my Mr. B's out of the way. And in here is living my fibre stash. So at the moment, the stash for fibre must not exceed the Pims hamper. Those are my self imposed rules. I'll just quickly show you the fibre that I have been acquiring. So first of all, Sharon at Taylor Made Yarns also is, she's such a talented lady. She creates her own um, hand dyed yarns and fibres that she sells as well. And this particular bat, which to me is just like heavenly, it's just sparkly and pink and gorgeous this was actually a natural dyed skein uh, not a skein a bat that she dyed with cochineal and it's logwood cochineal wensleydale cross plus locks plus silk plus sparkle oh my god so i'm really looking forward to having a spin with that beautiful bat and in my hamper my fibre hamper. I've also got these two, I believe these are braided tops. 
which I got from Shepherd's Hut. So they are lovely. I won't spend too much time on this. I know it isn't everybody's thing. This gorgeous braid of fibre from Bramble Patch. Was it Bramble Patch hand dyed? They were on Etsy. And that one is a blue face Leicester braid. Um, these are from the Fibre Hut. These are combed merino tops in pearl and peppermint, which I think are beautiful. And finally, from the Shepherd's Hut again, this little bag. Really pretty rainbow. I think these are tops as well. I'm really new to all this. I don't know anything, but I just really think I'm going to enjoy spinning. But of course, like all of us, it's allocating time to all the different things we like to do. Sewing, knitting, spinning, weaving. Um, there's just so much. and But it's all lovely, isn't it? So look out for more of that in the future. I hope you've all enjoyed your visit with me today. And I hope that you will pop back again soon. I do love seeing your comments. And if you want to sub subscribe, that would be fab too. So please feel free. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. And in the meantime, happy knitting. Bye.